This is currently based on RTF technology, um, which is kind of legacy, which is kind of doing what it's supposed to do, but it's not really quite future-proof. Um, there's no standard, there's an ad hoc um, implementation of that, and a number of other uh, clones of that implementation. But it would be really nice um, to have what's currently um, working with RTF to have that in ODF, and even better to have that working in ODF um, in a standardized way. Um, a little bit more background about, about CLB since we are kind of new here. So most of them probably hear about us the first time, or if you were in Bern, maybe the second time. Um, it's a medium-sized company, as I say, 25 years old, 160 employees um, on multiple sites. Um, Munich, uh, Germany, and Hamburg in Germany, and uh, also Minsk and Hispanos. Um, customers, most in Europe, but also um, Middle East, for example. Um, quite a number, um, 160, about 160k private customers for a number of small products, I mean, it's not those guys that produce the billions of documents, so it's stuff like uh, PDF filters and um, this uh, electronic invoicing systems, etc. Um, and about 2 million licenses sold worldwide, um, mostly so that the strongest presence is really in the, in the financial insurance banking sector. Okay. So, when you look at what, what's happening for those um, more complex um, document production or, or synthesization systems, um, what, what do you need? Um, so, well, usually you have some, some kind of letterhead um, that you uh, want to modularize, um, that you want to like corporate CI in there, like this, this, this normal standard mail match thing, but you want it um, probably you want it more complex with more variables, more variation, <coughs> uh, more complex layout. Um, and you want to individualize that, so depending on the customer and the way it gets more colors and more text and then you want to add customer address, stuff like that. Um, you also want to um, separate out, it's, it's, like, it's very much what, what those people do, it's very much like software engineering. So it's, uh, it's tax processing, which is, if, you, if you're a large a bank or large insurance amounts to software engineering, so you're setting up a system, a very complex system of interacting pieces, and you really want to have that modular. So you want to have small independent pieces that you can reuse at other places. So you want to um, include stuff. So you want to master the document and you want to plug in small pieces there. Um, you also want to uh, implement complex logic. So you want to, while you are processing this document and generating 5 million copies for your annual invoices or your annual um, statements, you want to customize that. So you want to, something comes out of the database and something else comes out of the database and you want to check what is that and then you want to programmatically act on that and do different things. In this example, I don't know if this is visible, um, there's a wheelchair and this kind of crutch thing uh, on the one branch, and there's a balloon uh, and, a, and a microphone on the other side. So depending on the customer, depending on the history of the customer, you want to do different things. You don't want to do that manually. It should be, uh, you want to do that once programmatically, and then it should work like that, henceforth. Thorsten? Yes? What is the function which is fulfilled by either a balloon or a microphone? The function? Yeah, so there's option B, yeah. and option B gives you either a balloon or a microphone. Yeah. What, what's the option? Why would I want either of those? Depending so again, on the, the balloon is like the toddler, you got the balloon, and the microphone is like, I don't know, 15 years old, like, wants to... So, like, really you want to <coughs> tailor the document to the customer or to the recipient or to whatever other complex scenario that you might invent, whatever. 
<coughs> local rules, regulations that you have to fulfill. I don't know, this statement has to be on page one, and this federal state on page two of that, or something like that. So depending on input from the database, you want to programmatically do stuff, so it's text programming to some extent. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so, um, of course, where this all comes from, usually, as, especially with slab large scale, uh, it comes from a database. So you want to generate content from a database. And, um, well, you say, don't bore me, this is possible in OEF, yes it is. Um, but um, for more complex scenarios, for example, if you want to generate tables, um, you can't do that because you can't generate higher level ODF structures. Or if you want to, for complex reports, you want to generate lists of lists, depending on how much. So if there's, I mean, just imagine some, some cooperative that wants to have a mortgage. So suddenly you have not just one address and one name, but you have a list of that and different <coughs> cities and sometimes different legal systems. Well, so you want to really generate or synthesize complex document content out of simple database input. Um, yeah, so this is what you want to do, and this is what actually works in RTF with this existing product. And the question now, what exactly um, is, is missing in RTF? And for that, I'd like to hand over to Vasily. Okay, regarding RTF, <coughs> it's easy, but uh, we are missing almost uh, everything uh, of uh, list of a person. We are unable to use uh, complex uh, instructions uh, to separate the plate with many smaller building blocks and to reuse them on the fly. We are missing the ability to have uh, complex uh, conditions, uh, for example, dependent on... Maybe you can use the microphone? I'm not sure if it's loud enough in the back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we are missing the complex conditions uh, in ODF. Uh, we want uh, to compare on the fly some the database with some other variables, and depending on this, we want to customize our templates, our reports we generate. Uh, we also, in case of quality, uh, missing feature of uh, usage complex formatting inside uh, all the fields. For example, that uh, conditional field uh, we have, we can put uh, only a text, a plain text inside. Uh, but how about complex formatting or even putting a table inside? Um, that's uh, still missing. And uh, generation of complex uh, objects uh, like, say, torsen, uh, tables, list of lists, and so on and so on. The classical examples can be here, for example, um, any report for bank list of transactions. Uh, we have uh, one user and a list of operations made. It is a long table, but um, hard to generate with existing uh, ODT. What actually we implemented till this moment in our project, the uh, product called GSMERS. We decided uh, not to uh, invent heap of new fields like uh, we, ha we had experience with RTF. When we are missing something, we create a new field. When we are missing something, we create a new field. Instead of this, we just uh, decided to create uh, just a couple uh, of fields, in, not create, but use uh, user fields in ODT. It is uh, marking of a block start and uh, mark of a block end. Uh, this is uh, just a poorly braced market, and in between of them, there will be a field content. Uh, visual appearance uh, displayed uh, below, and uh, more close, so what can be placed in, uh, in between these poorly brackets. We so actually, one thing is that th this stuff actually works in LibreOffice, so you can do this text programming today in LibreOffice. Of course, it's kind of ad hoc, so it's like you put some semantics into actual documents, like freeform document content, so it's not very very regular, but it actually works, which is cool. I mean, 
actually it is expected to show with a leaf uh, how it works, uh, how it uh, inserted, how these skills are processed, why we have a technical problem here. Torsten doesn't have GS mesh and my laptop doesn't have uh, HDMI. So uh, if somebody is interested in the leaf demo for this, uh, you can ask me today or tomorrow, I can uh, display uh, how this stuff is really working. So back to uh, just slides here. And uh, inside of uh, this field construction, we uh, can place uh, two different types of uh, content. First of all, uh, starting with hash sign, uh, followed by a script. Uh, in this place, uh, we have uh, user can place a Java script uh, processed by our products. Yes, we are more close uh, to implementation of that crazy idea, the JavaScript inside uh, ODT. Or it was uh, about HTML. But probably we are very close. And another variant it is about content fields, which can be something uh, not evaluated as a script, but uh, placed uh, somewhere in the output document. And uh, to allow uh, hash signs uh, inside of our content fields, there is a special variant with a tick in front of it. And we uh, do define several uh, primitive uh, JavaScript uh, functions uh, from our backend. It is uh, just a simple uh, function text, uh, which is uh, just writing uh, text uh, in class function to include our file, and uh, several specific uh, functions for getting a set of properties uh, passed uh, to the uh, pro program and a uh, heap of iterations on database. Uh, move to next record, uh, select record, uh, reset uh, our database pointer, and so on. So uh, this uh, heap is actually uh, will be enough to process uh, any complex uh, document, to implement any complex logic uh, inside of uh, uh, templates. Because uh, we do not need uh, no longer implement uh, like we have in RTF before. Uh, complex if uh, conditions, uh, we do not need uh, to invent uh, while loops, uh, we do not need uh, to create uh, any of our custom formatting uh, functions. Our customers can do it uh, by themselves, uh, just using poor JavaScript. Uh, actually, for processing JavaScript, it uh, is used the uh, Google V8 engine. It is uh, for security reasons running as, in, as a sandbox, so no direct uh, file operations, no any general I.O., no internet access, uh, only just some JavaScript uh, engine. Here must be a demo. And uh, actually, uh, what benefits we do receive uh, with this uh, idea? Uh, actually, these uh, topics uh, are not uh, very abstract, but mostly to comparing to our previous approach with uh, RTF. When we uh, were using uh, standard RTF fields, and uh, we're trying to extend this uh, list of fields with uh, any new instructions. At first, we have uh, more flexible uh, support of uh, documents. Uh, theoretically, we are not limited just to JavaScript. Uh, inside of the script field, it is um, easy to put any other script in the uh, language. Uh, on the concept level, uh, we were thinking about uh, choosing between JavaScript and Google. But um, there is no critical reasons uh, why to limit uh, to both of them. In any language, we just need to implement uh, some basic functions, and that's all. Uh, in this case, we are not limited uh, just to classical uh, way we used in RTF, just putting uh, fields inside fields to have a good result. Um, and uh, we can use even classes here, any uh, or paper dime, or whatsoever. Because uh, inside uh, of this uh, ODF template is running uh, absolutely legal uh, JavaScript. So the uh, customers are feel free to use uh, any type of uh, ideas uh, how to proceed with templates, how to 
uh, combine logic and uh, representation. Probably some sub functions, probably classes, whatsoever. This uh, way is uh, very simple compared to classical uh, RTF we used before because uh, after some iterations of extending uh, RTF uh, fields, uh, it is very hard uh, to read what actually happens. It is hard to understand what uh, actually uh, doing uh, this template. And uh, it is, um, became uh, a kind of very specific and very limited language which requires very uh, specific knowledge uh, to program it. Mm. This is not uh, true uh, if we just put uh, snippets of a uh, common uh, well known to your uh, customer's language. And uh, of course uh, we think that uh, this approach can be uh, very universal. Uh, because uh, theoretically this can be extended uh, to use uh, not just in ODT but even backported to RTF because we do not define exactly fields by themselves, uh, they are not uh, so syntactically, semantically specific, but we uh, just define a very basic uh, two brackets. Opening a curly bracket as a field and a closing curly bracket. About the future of this person. <laughs> Right. So, um, yeah. So the, 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 the proposal before that's actually a working product, um, and the nice feature is, as I said, it um, doesn't need any extensions to ODF. The drawback is um, that it's not actual ODF. It's it's an airport markup as if you would be going into a text document and marking something in red and then externally defining this red means something special. It would be better and more interoperable if there would be a way to express that in ODF, which there currently isn't. So one, that's just, this is just a rough idea. This is just a sketch of an idea that's um, not so different from a um, proposal that's been made uh, a number of years ago about extending uh, fields um, in, in the OEF TC, but maybe it's time now to, to pick up uh, bits and pieces from that. So what this does, it's def defining this bracket, so you have this begin and end. Uh, conceivably, that would also be able to skip uh, or to um, not be within the same level of the um, XML hierarchy, mm -hmm. but to have something that begins somewhere nested here and then ends somewhere nested there. Um, for example, if you want to um, include or exclude a large part of the document. So um, if that would be um, um, an XML element of begin and end, um, you wouldn't be able to skip in and out of, um, of the XML tree. So um, secondly, um, there's this um, field type which gives a little bit more um, type safety to what's actually inside there, how to interpret that. Um, before the example had this markup with this hash mark and this escape hash mark. Um, so that would be script content complex, for example. Um, and then random content to be defined, like the paragraph content. So one would probably set the limit somewhere there um, on depending on the type, like on um, probably in, uh, in, in page-based markup one would include pages there as well. And for text markup probably paragraph content would be sufficient uh, from what I can tell. Um, yeah, well, actually, probably one would also define, be able to define styles. So that should be a bit more generic. Um, additionally, um, it, I, I guess it would pay to say that at least a number of um, statements in the script uh, content, like include, um, like text, would be there. Um, but I, I would probably not mandate any language or at least leave that open. 
Um, yeah. But but as always, this is I mean this is not how how the TC works. I mean, you, you, uh, how the TC works is you, you have an idea, you make a proposal, and then it gets mangled over a certain time, and then something usually something better or at least something else comes on. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, yeah. So this is uh, largely it. Um, what do you think? That. So I see a potential danger because this looks somehow like a rebuild of PHP, not on top of HTML, but on ODF, uh, ODT actually. Yeah, that's actually quite to the point. And and when you see the and when you see what the people do there um, with uh, this tax programming, uh, it's rather rather similar. Yes, but. So we, we have this unfortunate tradition in the office area that we have always this intermingling of application logic and data and presentation. And I think we should continue in that direction. We have to find ways to declarate and to separate those issues. So for example, in your, uh, let's call it processing directives or solve something like selling database or something like that, and also get data or get data entry. It, in my opinion, we should find ways to express it in a more declarative way. For example, in a separate file, maybe as part of the whole document, but not as part of the content XML, have some algebraic expression which actually defines our data set, our query, maybe hierarchical or relational. It's, it's not, not the case. Yeah, so so what, I, what I hear is um, um, you, so, um, something like X, XSLT, so you can address um, uh, sorry, X query. You can address yes. um, statements, and you can say what to do with that statement yes. once you, once you have selected that. And, and in your contents, XML, you have markers. For example, is, this is the block to be used for that uh, query, and this is the block. The problem is that uh, X query and XSLT is really not for the faint of heart to do. And what's happening here? Ideally, that's something that the. I mean, for the simple cases, that should be something that the secretary can do. But the, the fear is, for the simple case, I think it's very fine. But then the people are coming who are driving that simple, or that the mechanisms to be intended to be used for simple things, that are driving me to the uttermost corners. OK, I have one fundamental problem with that. And this is, okay. um, this, uh, I know I'm a computer scientist myself. And um, I will also always make, try to make the world a better place. <laughs> The problem is, um, it tends not to work out. So I, I, I don't know. I'm not, whatever. I'm not doing this AI because they might build the robots and then the robots will take over the world. But it doesn't help because it's just one. It just needs one guy who's who's doing that and, and he did that. And so it always tends to tends to fail. And, and I mean, if you look at PHP, I find PHP a wonderful example because PHP is immensely successful. If you look, what people make out of PHP, it's awesome. Like, I don't know, 80% of, of, the, of, the, of the internet, of the sites, runs from PHP somewhere. And um, why not have that much of the world population do something wonderful with OGF, even if it's not, if it's not uh, fulfilling the, the, I don't know, the high blessing of the computer scientist approach? Because it's not that people didn't try that. So this, this um, separating that out, at the very ne at the very least, that needs really really excellent IE support for you to integrate those two disjoint <coughs> parts. And I find that rather pragmatic in comparison. But anyway, <laughs> I understand your point also. And the other, I mean, it doesn't mean that. I mean, it's not that you can only do one of the two, I mean you can do both. Yes. <laughs> Joss, you had another question? Yes, I didn't put my finger up yet, but I have questions. <laughs> yeah, I think you were almost <laughs> Almost, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, can you give me an example where you would need to have a field begin and field end instead of simply a surrounding element? Um, actually, Vasily asked me the same question yesterday, and I was, I was coming up with an example. So you had 24 hours already to think about this. Yeah, and, and I, he, he said, mm, that's not really practical. I said, well, I think it is, and we just <laughs> left it like that. Um, that's when we do that offline. 
it's possible that I'm not, since I'm, I mean, Vasily has actually had the thing and worked with it and programmed it and did demos and whatever. And, and so I, we are terribly sorry, but I'd love to show you um, a live demo of that. But unfortunately, there are some incompatible standards <coughs> of, uh, of the plugs. Um, but yeah, let's, let's maybe do that offline or in a TC even. Um, so I think it's useful. I think it's, um, this, we might have um, several matching, like we do some pre includes and what comes out of that is valid XML. Well, if, if, if the begin and the end are on different levels of the XML, yeah. then what comes out of that query or out of that function should also be uh, just an XML fragment and not actually a, comp an, a valid node set, sure, sure. but yeah. it should be text which should then be combined with the existing document and then yeah. reparsed. Mm -hmm. So that's quite quite complex to do. So you need to have a convincing argument why you want it. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take the challenge. Okay. <laughs> but that's a minor detail. I mean, if, if it's pointless, then it's pointless. It doesn't really invalidate the, the proposal um, in its entirety, I think. No, it's just one aspect. So. I mean, you, you could possibly then uh, choose a, a different markup, so you could then perhaps uh, have that as, as a real element, like really a, a nested element. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think it's more generic like that, and if it doesn't do any harm to be more generic, so if, if there's no cost to be more generic, then let's be more generic. But if you if you tell me that it can't possibly work because reparsing, for example, which is a good argument, um, um, I will go back to this. Yeah. And, and I have um, a comment with regards to doing the standardization process. Mm -hmm. um, in, since ODF 1.2, you can have either ODF 1.2 documents or ODF 1.2 extended documents. Mm -hmm. So you can, right now, already take pick a namespace and yes, write, write all of this the in that namespace. The yeah. problem is that you also then need to um, change all the editing applications you're going to work with. Yes. Um, since this or is write a, a plugin. Yes, you will write a plugin or write three plugins um, or four. So um, for the, since this is a standalone product, it was considered better to to not do that simple. I mean, and the background story that I mean, why there was quite some, how to put that, um, some confusion in the market, like which, and, and if you don't really, I mean, you can't really, you don't have the, the crystal ball, you can't look into the future, and for that, you better play it safe and check and pick something that you can edit in, in every ODF processing application that's out there that supports fields. And you're done with it. Yeah. And and the mapping is trivial. I mean, programmatically mapping one to the other. It's, that's of course. It's one to one mapping. So yes. You can always, if you if years later things clear up, you can always change forces without losing anything. But I agree. I mean, for bringing that properly, bringing that into the GC, perhaps that sort of extension would be. Yeah. Getting something to the DC can take a long time, right? So it might be a good idea, just like with the open formula. We started out with formulas in a specific namespace. It matured there in, in a number of implementations, and then it was adopted. And it was moved into the idea. I think that approach would be probably best. So to just um, initially um, give that some, some, uh, some vetting, so if this is complete nonsense, then we don't have to bother. If there's, um, if you can poke holes into that in five minutes, like you kind of did with this, with this nesting, that's valuable as well. So then you can just save yourself the hassle of implementing that, demoing that, and then going back to the drawing board, and then you do that and implement that, and then hope that gets the blessing. Um, okay, so we are. Look like six minutes all the time. Any further questions, comments, ideas? 
I don't know, want to throw something at us? Or want to <laughs> Great. Nothing. Okay. Cool. Um, thanks a lot for your attention. It's been great. <laughs> See you around. <laughs>